Hi. It's everyone. Oh, hi. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> hi. Well, thank you so much for joining us. This is our thank second fireside, our Soap Hub Insider June fireside. And thank you so much, Martha, for being our guest. I want to thank you guys for the wine and the gift of having it. It's like so thank beautiful. I just, I just got home and it was here and it was such a nice surprise. Thank you very much. Here we go. Um, uh, Martha, Lily, it's Emmy <laughs> Week, and can you share your experiences from being at the uh, ceremonies the last couple of years, especially, uh, Martha, you were there last year as a nominee. How'd that feel? Oh, I mean, it was awesome, you know? I had never been nominated for an acting award before, or at least for the, one of the main shows, so that was um, a surprise. <laughs> Um, and it was, it was nice because I wasn't actually on the show, so it was like a reunion to get to go and see everybody. Um, but it was, it was great. It's always nice to be recognized for doing something that you love to do. What are the perks of being a nominee? Do you get more, more swag? We get way more swag, which is also <laughs> great. We, um, we actually use our Facebook portal a lot that we got there for free, which is great. I actually use it when I'm traveling today to talk to my daughter so that was fitting and lily you've been there the last couple of years as a nominee and a winner for the bay what's that been like well first of all martha how the hell do you use that facebook portal i have not <laughs> known what to do with it <laughs> my six-year-old taught me how to use it you have got to teach me how to use that thing i know it's cool but you i haven't it used on it and you call through facebook messenger and then it like follows you around the house it's super weird so uh, that was an amazing time in my life. Um, I always dreamt since I was a youngster to win an Emmy. I was such a diehard soap fan. And I just, I, I can't, I still can't believe it. You know, there's days that I walk into my living room and I'm like, what? How did that happen? So um, anything is possible. It was always really, really fun. I'm a girly girl. And so I love the dressing up, but I got to tell you, you get so exhausted by the end of that Emmy week. I could barely stand in my heels. I don't think Martha ever did like full on the whole week like me. She's a little more <laughs> reserved. <laughs> exactly. I but am not that, that person at it, all. It, I know. There's the nominee reception, uh, parties before, the creative arts. Probably something on Saturday, something the main show on Sunday. Yeah, no. And, you know, for <laughs> us, the Bay decided to throw an Emmy party every year. So then I literally had something every night. By the time that we would get to the big event, I couldn't walk on my heels. I it was the most painful day of the week. And finally, I'm like, maybe I should skip a day. <laughs> oh my god! I always keep a pair of flip flops in my in my bag. So. <laughs> She's know. always the smarter one. I mean, I have no qualms with admitting that. <laughs> I just don't, you know, if it's supposed to be a lot of fun, I'm not fun when I'm uncomfortable, and I'm pain. Just, I am easily uncomfortable, both physically and emotionally. <laughs> like. So, you know, being on display and all of that, it's, uh, it's not, it, I don't enjoy that kind of Is stuff. it an opportunity to see people from other shows that you have always wanted to meet or that you worked with a long time ago or right. in the past? Yeah, I mean, like I said, I'm always kind of in and out. So every time I do anything soap related, it's like a, a nice reunion. And we actually got to meet a lot of people doing soapbox the three of us so that you know that was kind of how I got to know a lot of people that weren't on the show I, I have uh, social anxiety I really do so like if I don't know you or I've never talked to you before I'm probably not going to be the one to run up and say hey I'm Martha for me it's like a high school reunion or like the high school dance you know you get to see everybody <laughs> and hang with everybody and it's so much fun and as far as like me going up to somebody that I admire their work, after a couple of drinks, I have no issues. <laughs> <laughs> what was on your reel last year? Um, um, your reel? Um, it was um, it was all the stuff around Marlena uh, being on life support. So I think there was a really long scene with Mary Beth, which I really liked. That was I felt. I, I, it was one of those days when I was shooting that I thought, 
you just feel like you're there, you know, it's like you really kind of slip into this other place where you're actually like, you're in it, you know, um, and I, I felt like it was that scene. And then there was a scene I did with Drake, where a couple, I did two scenes with Drake. Um, one where he's just, you know, coming at me like angry and, and it was more of a reactive uh, scene. And then one where I'm just kind of pleading with him to, you know, to not be angry with me for wanting to do what she wanted me to do. And I thought those showed a pretty good range and, and the way that they piece together, I kind of piece them together to sort of tell the story to people who don't necessarily watch the show. And so I felt like it just, it just kind of came together very easily. What fun do you have playing Belle? Because she'll just tell it, shoot from the hip, tell it like it is. Is it like, it, it's like a release? <laughs> I, <don't laughs> I mean, I, I like that Belle is an attorney now because she can be more straightforward. And I think to know me, <laughs> to know <laughs> I'm a pretty straight shooter. I don't, uh, I don't, I don't fluff things typically. <laughs> Oops. Um, uh, so that works for me. I think the only thing I, I just wish that she was um, maybe had a little bit more of a sense of humor. I feel like she's always very serious or bawling or angry and you know um, Lily knows I love to laugh and be silly and like I wish there was more of that but yeah I do like that she's a straight shooter. Well, you got to do a little bit of that when she was drunk, which I love. Yes. Oh my love. God. <laughs> that was so funny. It's, it's like one scene a long time ago where Belle's wasted and like goes, like does this whole thing. And it was, oh. I was so nervous about it. I worked it out with Lily because it was like a six page drunk monologue where she starts tripping and laughing and ends like sobbing on the floor. <laughs> and so I was like, I don't know what to do. She knew, had no idea what that's like. So, you know, had to help her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We did some method trials. A couple yeah. <laughs> what's, the, uh, what's the secret to playing drunk? To try uh, not to play drunk. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Act like you're not. You're trying to be sober. Try to be sober. Yeah. Good. Try to be sober and you take your emotional range and multiply it by 10. <laughs> so yeah. what is the deal with Belle and Sean these days? They're not married, but... Belle and Sean got divorced like in 2016, 17, something like that. Um, and they never got remarried as far as we know because they got back together and left to go to Hong Kong together. And so since the first time we came back from that, Brandon and I were like, well, they haven't mentioned that we're married and there's never been talk of a wedding. So I guess we're not married. Yeah. No, we're not married. And we've played it that ever since. We love each other. <laughs> Wait, but obviously, how are we going to do soaps now that there's no getting it on? Like, that's such a big part. Of no, you, did you see, yeah. though, that Bold and the Beautiful, yeah, Bold and the Beautiful said that some real life spouses were gonna be body doubles. And I told AJ, oh, I said, that's fantastic. I, know. I said, guess what? You're gonna come to work with me. He's like, I need a contract. <laughs> <laughs> and they said they're using um, blow up dolls. I read that too. And my <laughs> sister and I had a great laugh. You know, that, that blow up doll <laughs> remark has gotten them more press mm -hmm. than anything. Like it has been everywhere over social media that they are using blow up dolls. And I mean, you know. If because gets, nobody would put it past us. <laughs> if, if it makes someone tune in to see how they're gonna do it and then they get hooked on a story, they've got another viewer. It's true. I don't, I don't wanna make out. <laughs> how is your daughter doing with ha all of this staying home? in quarantine or yeah I mean she's taking really good care of us she you know she uh, makes sure that we all brush our teeth every day <laughs> we get some exercise <laughs> no I'm serious she's uh she's handling it way better than I expected and a lot better than I think some of the other kids that, that we know um mainly because she is an only child and she's already kind of used to being on her own and she's really good at playing by herself. She has a, a ridiculous imagination and she likes to have 
conver- like grown up conversations and yeah, you know, she's just really smart. So in that regard, we kind of lucked out. Um, but she misses her friends and she wants to go back to school. And we're not sure here in Texas. I mean, Governor Abbott just said that the schools are going to open, but then he also said yesterday that we're about to have another shutdown. So I don't know. Yeah, um, Texas is a, is in the news a lot right now. Yeah, and Dallas specifically, which is where I live, is really bad. So I, uh, I I'm not promising her school yet, but I'm trying to let her know that it's going to get better, and I think she's she's fine for now. So she's good. She's a at your restaurant. Oh, restaurant. <laughs> well, um, a restaurant is not open, uh, which I think is actually a blessing because we were really behind schedule and ended up not opening yet when the shutdown happened, which I think overall was a very good thing. Um, now we have a little bit of runway to try and decide how we're going to make this, we're going to have to change the concept and make it fit to kind of the times that we're in which isn't a full service restaurant anymore. So we're actually having a lot of fun with some ideas um, that we have and and I'm getting more excited about what we're planning to do now than what we were doing before. So, you know, I really think it is just kind of about how you attack it head on and and try and make a plus out of a a negative. Um, So we'll see, I I don't wanna share too much yet, but we are, you know, barring any other major catastrophe is trying to open in September. Well, Martha, how did you get into the restaurant business um, from being an actress? What piqued your interest? Well, I have been working in the restaurant business since I was like three days after I turned 16. So I've always been uh, in the restaurant industry, mainly to, you know, support myself as I was trying to go to school and and become an actress and do all those things. And, um, you know, I really like it. I think it's not dissimilar to being an actress in the way that it's it's all about people. It's all about kind of um, relating to other people. So in that respect, I just kind of naturally was into that. Like I wanted to interact with other people and meet all kinds of people and, um, you know, the food and the drinks and all that stuff was sort of secondary to that. When I moved from New York to LA, I, I got hired to open a restaurant in Hollywood called Luna Park. And that was my husband's uh, third restaurant. So I met him three days after I moved to Los Angeles <laughs> while I was escaping another boyfriend. <laughs> so uh, it was meant to be. And um, he is really the kind of genius behind our businesses. And, um, and this one that we're going to open here will be our seventh restaurant together. Wow. On the topic of people and profession and in a very real way, genius, I'd like to ask both you and Lily, about your experience with uh, producing Soapbox. We had just done something for, what was the show called, Martha? With- it was um, Planet 360 with That's Jim Romanovich, who was doing it for, I don't remember, Pop, maybe, or one of those. Yeah, I don't remember what it was, but we had the best chemistry. Mm-hmm. And we had just done that. It was really divine timing. And so when it happened, naturally, I thought of Martha, and she didn't want to do it because she was pregnant. You were pregnant. I was like six or seven months pregnant. And a little miserable and just like, no, I don't want to do anything. I'm like, I do not give up. I don't take no for an answer. And next thing we know, she's not only doing it, but she like takes the full reins, which is fine (laughs) with me. (laughs) You can't help it. (laughs) And next thing you know, she's all in. And it was just one of the most fun adventures that we've been on. Yeah. It was, really fun. Fun. it was so much fun. Well, it's been my experience that most adventures come with morals. So what sorts of things did you learn while doing this? I mean, it sounds like you learned a lot about each other, but I'd love to hear what other <laughs> insights came out of it. Um, you know, I, I think one of the main things that I learned was you know, we would have a new guest every week and we would spend, the, I, would, I would spend the whole week prepping, <laughs> like doing research and trying to find all these great things about these people that we could talk about. And you get really psyched up that, you know, you have an idea, for the people I didn't know already, I had this idea of how it was all gonna go. And I was so often surprised that they were so different in person than what you would expect them to be by what you 
knew about them either online or on the show or, you know, through friends or whatever. So it was always interesting to me how different people were than I thought they would be. Um, I, and I, and how they would sort of perform on the show versus what I thought they would be. Martha loves to prepare and I love to be in the moment and not know what's going to happen. That's how I thrive. Mm -hmm. I get off on that. Like, I don't know, it's like an underlying little nerve thing, but it keeps me present. It's yeah. almost like the cheat of how to stay present. Mm -hmm. So not that I wouldn't look things up on our guests because I would, I would definitely study up on them and try to find the most interesting things that maybe other interviewers hadn't asked or didn't know about them. But as far as like having a vision for how it would go, that's just not how I work. Um, mm -hmm. I, I, I like to not know, I get off on the not knowing. So we make such a good team. And I think that uh, what I learned about it is how really at the end of the day, authenticity always is what most engages people. Mm -hmm. And that was the beautiful thing that was created on Soapbox is that there was no censorship and that there, there wasn't um, anything pre-planned. So our guests got to truly be themselves and people love that because they watch them daily as their characters or in other interviews where there is some censorship and you have to be a little more professional. This was more of a relaxed environment. And I think people were always happily surprised at mm -hmm. the true personality of their cherished actors or characters from the day totally. to world. Lily, how's your daughter handling uh, the whole quarantine thing? This is literally her dream come true. <laughs> <laughs> Not my kids. Not my kids. <laughs> I know. So many kids are having an issue with it, but mine is in heaven. She's been asking to be homeschooled for years. Oh. So now, you know, and she, she's an honor student, straight A's, like top in the country. Like she's just a freak of nature. So she gets her stuff done. And, but she would rather be home doing it. And she's just the type that would rather be home than anywhere else in the world, which, you know, is kind of cool. She enjoys mommy's company. So she's just so happy. She's thriving. I see her, um, her personality's coming out more and more because she's literally living the life of her dreams. <laughs> she's <laughs> so such rare. a smart girl. Like she's going to, She's going to run against Charlie for president. <laughs> <laughs> she could be Charlie's vice president. Okay. <laughs> we love seeing the two of you work together. So what's next in store? Oh, that's for Lily to write it. <laughs> yes. Well, uh, we've been planning some stuff for a while now. It's just a matter of getting it done. Um, I work with a writer that, uh, specializes in comedy so and that's really I've really taken more of a turn for comedy I absolutely love it and Martha is hilarious and this writer is in love with us as a as a duo so she's always wanting to write something for us so before you know it there'll be some cool I don't know dark comedy that we'll be doing that has nothing to do with our real lives <laughs> yes and we can shoot the whole thing on zoom Yes. <laughs> well, you had one of the most epic soap opera deaths <laughs> on yes. General Hospital so many years ago. I, there, there's no way to ever forget. You know, it, it is such a cool thing for me because I'm not kidding when I say I was a diehard fan. Like that was my dream in life was to be on General Hospital. And then my other dream was to work with this actor that played Desi Arnaz, which right. is Maurice Bernard. <laughs> and I mean, wow, it was just so crazy that, that both things really, really happened. And then to like put the cherry on top, I get one of the most famous deaths on daytime. Like, that's just <laughs> insane. It's, it's insane. It's a, it's a, you know, life is just a beautiful ride. And more than anything was the reaction at that time. It's something that would never happen today. It's, it's just a different time. But the reaction that I had when that aired, I cannot, it, it's insane. I had, um, I was in first class coming back from a Miami vacation and the lady literally lost her breath, the stewardess. And she's like, <gasps> and I'm like, yes. And she's like, 
I took a week off of work after that aired because I was so devastated. She was not joking. This really happened to another human being over my death on a soap opera. And that weekend, I went with a bunch of soap actors to Miami just to, you know, go party. I'm done with GH and, you know, new chapter and a bunch of our friends, we all flew to Miami and it aired that Friday and I couldn't walk down Miami Beach without people like jumping out of the car, screaming, Lele! it was like insane. I went out to dinner to a four star restaurant and there was a line, an actual line of people to talk to me. It, it, that would never happen today off of a soap opera. There's just, no, that's... that time is gone. You know what I mean? But I look back at that and it just blows my mind the kind of impact that that storyline had. Well, I think we've got a few questions from some of our fans here. Yeah, hi, everybody. Um, I'm honored to be invited here tonight. And I just want to say I've been um, a fan of Days of Our Lives since I was a senior in high school a long time ago, like 1978. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, I've pretty much seen everything, every episode, maybe a few years I, you know, didn't get to watch. But, but Martha, how old were you when you first appeared as, as Belle? How old was I? Was 27? Like, what year that was? Or yeah, so I do. <laughs> yes, it was 2004. And yeah. I got hired, like, the day before my birthday, the day before my 27th birthday. So I was 27 when I started. Okay. And then we have Archie. Martha, you are one of my favorite performers. What were your favorite scenes on Days? Ooh, that's a big one. Well, the scenes that I always, like that I was in, that I always tell people are reference is um, getting knocked up in the middle of a thermic, ther hypothermic coma. <laughs> what? Yes, no. when Sean and Belle were in a hypothermic coma and accidentally had sex while the, <laughs> right, right before the barn burned down, and then he had to rescue me from the barn. Oh God. <laughs> that, was, that was one of my favorites. And then I'd say the, the, the last stuff that we did uh, around her DNR stuff, I loved that time with Drake. We did a lot of work together, and it was some of my favorite time working with him. He was just so amazing and, like, the perfect scene partner, and it was just like kind of out of body, like I said, it was just, it was great. Do you remember your first day? What? Of course. <laughs> the whole day is a story in itself. I mean, I had, I had already not gotten that job. So, um, oh, yeah. I, I, I tested and I didn't get it and they hired another actress. And so I, at, at the time they were shooting only about three weeks ahead of time. And after her first air date, um, my, I watched the show to see who got it and she was adorable. And of course I had a total meltdown and was like, why am I doing this? I need to get out of here. Um, and my agent called me the very next day and said, they want you to get down to the studio as fast as possible. And I said, what do you mean? And he said, she said, I, I don't know. Maybe they want to, you know, put you in as a day player or something. They obviously like you just get down there. So I went down there and um, they walked me up to the office and he sat me down and he said, we made a mistake and here's two scripts, go to hair and makeup, we'll see you on set in a couple hours. And I was just like, what? <laughs> I just didn't know what to do. So I shot two shows that day before I even got to call my agent or my mom or like nobody. I was late for work. <laughs> it, was a, it is a day I will never forget. If you guys had to go on to another soap opera, which soap opera would you want to go on to? Young and the Rest. And, you know, do you have a hesitation there? <laughs> no, I love that. I would do it like that. <laughs> Tony has great benefits. Be, does it have to be another soap opera? What about Prime Time Show or Netflix? It's like a soap opera, I guess. <laughs> well, I mean, no, no, I know. We're sticking to the daytime realm, but does it have to be another soap? Because... I'm just such a GH, like, through and through. I don't know. Like, you just... I don't know. I, and I, I, know <laughs> I, can't even, I can't even say I'd want to go back to GH. But, yeah, if I had to pick another soap, I think YNR has really strong actors. So in that 
in that way, it would be the most challenging and I think would help me grow. So. Yeah, but if you came to Days, you could have a dressing room next to me. Oh so. my God, it would be a slumber <laughs> party. <laughs> we never leave my I was going to say, we just get some bunk beds and hang out forever. <laughs> <laughs> For that reason only, Days. Okay. <laughs> Accept it. Thank you so much, folks. Have a great evening. Thanks to all our insiders. Thanks to all the Soap Hub folks. Thank you we'll so much. We'll see you all much. next time. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye.